What's up guys? It is Derek from Days Designs coming at you with a brand new Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Yes, this video will be a tutorial video. In this video I'll be going over my vectoring process, mainly focusing on the outline. As you can see, this is the outline from a goat sketch that I created a few days ago for a mascot logo. It will be a pre-made logo. More information on that in the description. Anyways, so when I start off my logos and illustrations, um, you know, mascots included, I put the, there's nothing here. Okay, so I put the sketch into the first layer or the bottom layer, the layer that is on the bottom. And then after that, I'll usually put it somewhere wherever I feel comfortable, put it in the, directly in the center, bottom left, or bottom right, top right, anywhere. I put mine on the top left. Maybe it's because I'm right-handed, not sure. But anyways, I put it in the first layer and then lock that layer so it cannot be adjusted as you see. Um, I click the pen tool, it shows the circle, the slash, so I can't edit on that layer because it's locked. So if I try to highlight it, can't do anything with it. So the second layer is for coloring. That's where I do all my coloring, highlighting, shadows for the basic, um, for the base of the design. Then after that, in the layer above that is where I create my outlines. Um, so yeah, so to get started on the outlines, I'll be going over two ways to outline a illustration or, you know, to for a logo design or whatever. So one way is by doing each individual line one at a time. So right here, you'll see this line. So for one line, you could just go all the way to here and then stop and stop at this corner and start right here. Um, I'm not gonna do that one, I'll do the eye. So I'll start here and then just focus on the top portion just to do one at a time. And then another thing you can do is do the whole thing, create each shape that you see uh, as a whole and then subtract it from the other one using the Pathfinder tool, which I'll do secondly. So to start off, I'll do one line at a time, or what I will call one line. So I like putting this color black. I do not use a stroke. Sometimes strokes can mess up uh, the anchor points. Um, so say you do, say you create a shape that has a stroke. If you wanted it to be perfect and you switched it back, sometimes the anchor points will change and move. And that's not good because I may forget and it could mess up the design. So always focus on the fill of the shape. And I always put it, put the transparency to 25. You can do 35, 45, 50, 75. It doesn't really matter. I like 25 just because I feel like it's perfect for me. So anyways, um, for the eye, I'll put one anchor point here. One... Uh, yeah, I'll put it just in the middle one acre point here and then I will alt click and drag and shift as well just to keep it straight for this handle to bring it back because it was too far and then create a point and then for any rounded shapes I always use um, a vectoring process that I got from a online course that I took for vectoring and logo designs and that and one takeaway that I got from that is uh, for circular shapes that are you know, like circles, even ovals as well, is using a clock for a reference of where to put your anchor points. You notice a clock is inside of a perfect circle. So uh, another example would be click L on your keyboard and that'll give you the ellipse tool, shift, alt, click and drag, and that'll give you a perfect circle as well. So for the perfect circle, if you click A, direct selection tool, and you notice the anchor points are at 12, three, six, and nine from a clock. And these are all, and this, all three, I'm uh, sorry, all four of these anchor points make a perfect circle um, if they are placed in those positions and the handles, left and right handles of the Bezier curve, which is right here, are identical. So from here to here of the handles is the same distance on this anchor point from here to here. And on this one, as well and this one so all the handles and anchor points are in perfect distance and the same length for the handles in each one of them and that creates a perfect circle so i use that as a reference to make mine to make my circular shapes more perfect and um, as close as possible to an actual uh, circle so i'll put that handle there or that anchor point there and this one there I'll probably bring this up a bit more and yeah so if I was to shake this away, this is the top portion of the eye. And again, click the eye to show and hide specific layers. 
So I am happy with that one for now. And I will put that pair, um, sorry, opacity, transparency all the way up. And then I will put the next anchor point here for the eye, put that there. And then considering it's here, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna, won't be able to see it. And then I'll put another one here. Again, stick into our clock. This will be six o'clock. And then for this one, I'll just put it anywhere because it's really, really focused, not so much focusing on a perfect circle as in comparison to just following along with the line. So, and then to close that one off. Now, you see this is missing. So one thing I could do is click with the direct selection tool that is A on the keyboard for the shortcut. Learning shortcuts, guys, saves a lot of time. And then, um, Click on this anchor point. As you notice, I clicked and dragged it from here to here just uh, to go over my sketch. And then I'll click on this one and then make sure you're using the direct selection tool again, just A, and then click and drag while holding shift. That's to keep, when you're holding shift, that keeps it um, perfectly horizontal, perfectly straight up and down or perfectly, um, yeah, sorry perfectly horizontal, perfectly uh, vertical, and also they have the 45 degree angles. So while holding shift, create insert. But anyway, so shift and then to the left, holding that, and that is just to keep it perfect and closest to a real circle as possible, or perfect circle. And then just moving this handle to further uh, perfect the line and keep it as close to my sketch as possible. So. That's pretty much how I would create uh, each line at a time for the outlining process of my vector designs. Now, another thing you could do, which is sometimes what I'll do to save time, but it's not, um, it can be a little bit harder and it's also not as, um, you know, not as detail oriented because some things may be off in comparison of the anchor points. But anyways, this one's more for speed. So click Alt and then drag that is for the handle i could click here and just go like that this would actually be a lot better now that i think about it maybe maybe not all right so six o'clock here we can drag this one up a little bit more alt shift drag over here and then i could just uh, shift alt and drag uh, for a straight straight uh, vertical line and then six o'clock again and then I'll bring it all the way to 12 o'clock over here and come over a little bit more I'll click shift and drag same thing here this one can come up more down more and I'll leave it there and then again this will be doing each individual shape at a time so this is the overall shape of the eye this is the out, outer shape. And then again, 25 opacity. And now we can see the inner shape of the eye. So this is the actual eye, and this was the outline of the eye. This up a little bit. Yes. Perfectionists, so forgive me guys. <laughs> if I ever say it takes a while for my designs, this is why. <laughs> I like things to be perfect. Okay, so anyways, now that it is on 25, um, now we can see the actual shape on the inside. Another thing you could have done was started with the inner shape, so that would have gave you the inner shape first, and then you wouldn't have to do this. But um, either way, it doesn't really matter. Neither one is better than the other. But now to create the inner shape, I'll pretty much do the same thing I did right here, except for this point won't be going like this. So to follow this, click and drag as you create this handle here. And then just to follow the top line, you'll notice that this top line goes like this, kind of like an S. So I will, so now that I created that anchor point, click there to get rid of the handle that would be otherwise messing up and making it round. I don't want it to be round, I want it to be pointed. So click Alt, or sorry, Alt, click and drag on the anchor point to change where the handle is. So now as you can see, if I put it off to this way and then put my anchor point over here, it creates this shape kind of like this right here so i'll just move this and then go here it's way too much and i'll bring it back a little bit might not even need it but however I'm just putting it there for now just for example 
and then bam. So now after that is finished, um, you can just leave that how it is for the perfect uh, one. This one. Okay, so now after you created your outer shape and the inner shape, now what you do is um, click V on your keyboard, which is the selection tool or the sh uh, keyboard shortcut for the selection tool, and then highlight both of them and then Pathfinder, go to your Pathfinder. And then one way to get that is by to go to your window and then make sure, sorry, Pathfinder is checked. I guess also you can um, do Shift Control F9. Never done that. Shift Control F9. Let's see if that works. F9. Oh goodness. Okay, it did something else. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. Nope. Shift Control F9. All right, whatever. So, yeah, and that's how you get your Pathfinder uh, Pathfinder tools. So, highlight these with V, and then highlight them, and then. Uh, minus front which is this one and that will minus the front shape so as you'll remember I created this shape first so it is in the back then this shape last so it is in the front or above the shape so if you highlight them both and minus the front shape it will take away the shape that is on the top or in the front and if I was to minus back you'll notice the filter product the filter produced no results because the front is um, because the shape that's on the back is bigger than this one. So if I was to go like this, however, and then minus the back, it'll minus the back. But anyways, so we're going to minus the front and then there is your shape. And this is the fastest way for me to do it. It's all personal preference, guys. There isn't really a, a you know, a best way. It's whatever works for you. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys, I hope that helps you guys for the outlining process. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video, the speed art, and I'll talk to you soon.